Good morning and welcome again to the Unitarian Universalist Society of Bangor. When I knew that the theme of services for this month was commitment, it made me think about the things I have committed to in my life. Family and friends certainly come to mind. UUSB is a huge commitment for me. Work, all the things most people feel commitments toward. But one important commitment in my life has been to hope. Not the hope it's gonna, not gonna rain tomorrow type of hope, but the deep and enduring commitment to feel hopeful, to find the silver lining, and to know that no matter what the outcome, I will be okay. Many of you know I had cancer in my 30s. First I had surgery and they thought they'd gotten it all, but then two years later it was back with strange symptoms that kept them from finding it for quite a while. The inoperable tumor was treated with radiation. That saved my life. But something else that happened during that time saved my spirit. When I was in the hospital, a nurse saw something in me and she told me that I could help be part of the healing process. She told me about the work of Dr. Bernie Siegel, who had written the book, Love, Medicine and Miracles, and how the book was helping people believe they could be part of their own healing. It was giving people a hope they didn't have before. Visualizing healing was a big part of the message. I asked my then husband to get me the book, but I was too sick to focus or read. It just stayed on the bedside table and not really knowing what else to do, I started visualizing the radiation as a glowing golden light that was coming into my body and curing my cancer. I started to believe and have hope that this was true and every day I was doing better. I came home after about 10 days and continued radiation for the better part of a month I got well enough to be able to focus and actually read the book. And then I heard that Bernie Siegel was coming to Bar Harbor for a workshop and I signed up immediately. I didn't know anyone in the theater style room we were in. I was toward the back, a person still reeling from the reality of having cancer and honestly feeling quite glum. Then I noticed a group up towards the stage in the front row. All these people were laughing and having a great time. They were all wearing purple t-shirts. Many had various stages of hair loss or weight loss, obvious signs of the effects of their disease or treatments. And when one turned around, I saw their t-shirt said, hope. Wow. It turned out that this was a group of people from Maine who were attending hope groups in Portland, Hollowell and South Paris with Dr. Ken Hamilton, who had fashioned the groups he led after the guidelines of Bernie Siegel. I watched those happy people. I knew they were probably not all going to live through their illness, but I wanted to be them. I wanted to feel the joy and the hope they were finding in their lives. So after a fascinating and inspiring workshop, Ken Hamilton offers his services to help start groups in Maine. I stood up and asked others in the room if they were from the Bangor area to give me their names and numbers so we could start a hope group in Bangor. Amazingly, Ken agreed to facilitate our group and came from South Paris almost weekly for a couple of years to guide us in our healing. Hopeful journey. Ken is a deeply spiritual person and brought so much enriching spirit to each group. We weren't there to talk about cancer. We were there to talk about life and living and hoping. Hope stands for healing of persons exceptional. And we were all made to feel that we are exceptional. As in the first reading, we learned how to acknowledge our limitations and live fully anyway. That is hope. I first went to the hope group to find my own hope and healing. And then I stayed attending weekly for about five years and I found my spirituality. <clears throat> I found the joy, friendship, and hope that the people were feeling at the workshop. I found I was able to help others find their hope by sharing my story and journey to hopefulness. And cancer became a thing of my past, 33 years now. 
and though I still feel the after effects of the radiation as my legs have become affected by the, by the nerve damage, I don't let that stop me from continuing my life in a positive, hopeful way. Later, I joined Hope's board, and then I worked for Hope and continued my journey with Ken, finding great spiritual growth as I continued to be involved with the organization. There isn't a Hope group in Bangor anymore, but Ken Hamilton, now in his 80s, still holds groups in South Paris and Portland with the help of other trained facilitators. His website is hopehealing.org if you want to know more. I'll put the link in the chat. I made wonderful friends through the Hope experience. Many of them did not survive their illness, but they all lived with the knowing that hope does not necessarily mean a cure, but a commitment to live as fully as possible in each moment. To live with joy and love in spite of the hurdles, illness, or anything else might throw at you. To maintain an attitude of hope. The coronavirus pandemic has certainly taught us a all a bit about hope, hasn't it? Most of us have experienced at least some level of hopelessness and despair at the isolation of the stay-at-home orders. Zoom has kept us connected, but it hasn't kept us connected in that vital face-to-face -face way most humans crave. Trying to stay hopeful has not been easy over the past year or four for reasons way beyond COVID-19. And yet, can you remember the moment when hope started to return? Was it the election? The inauguration? The day you or your loved one got the first vaccine? Or maybe that hope started to return as it does each year with the cycles of the seasons. When we hit that moment of the return of light in, at winter solstice, and then the equinox when the light starts to become the greater part of the day, there will be starting of seeds, perhaps you have already started some, and the hope of gardens beginning to grow. These cycles are part of the natural flow of the spiritual world we live in. The experience of the hope, of the hope spring brings is a cyclical annual event. We can relish in the additional hopefulness we may be feeling because of all the other factors of our worlds opening up from the restrictions of the pandemic. And we can make a commitment to hold on to this feeling, even if we have to hunker down again. One other thing I've learned about hope is that it requires our attention and our action to stay vibrant. We can't just hope that things will get better. We have to be actively evolved. Hoping you'll win the lottery will never happen if you don't buy a ticket, right? Hoping that climate change will go away isn't going to achieve that goal either. Becoming an active part of the change is how it will happen. This works in every aspect of hope. And of course, we need to be realistic about what we hope for. If our parent is old and falls ill with a terminal illness, hoping they won't die is not realistic. Hoping that we can be the light that helps their last days be worth living and then taking action to make sure that happens. That is the action hope needs. As we practice hope, we learn that moving from hoping to, for ourselves to hoping in a way that brings a light to others can bring more joy and love into our lives. The boy in the story <clears throat> was hoping to see something in the night. The girl took action and made sure that there was something for him to see. Becoming that light is perhaps one of the most spiritual things we can accomplish. That's the goal to hope for. One of the most hopeful things for me that has happened this past year took place at the inauguration of President Biden when Amanda Gordon, Gorman read the inaugural poem. Her words leapt out at me then and they still do now. Quote, for there is always light if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. Blessed be.